Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we will discuss about the Indian Economic Service exam paper of 2021. So the exam happened in 2021 in the month of July. So we'll be discussing one by one all the papers okay, in the video series. So make sure that you subscribe Ecoholics so that you'll get all the videos. So first of all, we'll go for the five markers, five markers question of uh, general economics. So that is, there are four papers. So this is the fourth paper that we are seeing dealing with the Indian economy. Okay. So this is the first question. Now let's see what is there to understand. Now, first of all, you have to read the question very carefully. If you remember the last videos that where I discussed about these keywords that is what we call directives so if you remember that video or if you haven't watched it please see the link is given in the description so briefly account so here you can say the account for the slow rates of capital formation in the indian economy during the last decade so there are few keywords whenever we read question you have to understand that so in that scenario, see that briefly, it means why? Because it is a five marker. So you'll get only 100 words to write. So it's a single page where UPSC gives a booklet like this. If you want sample booklet, it is available for free on our mobile app. So here they will write the question and then you have to write the answer. That is why we're saying. So the directive word is here, account for, but that too briefly or chota. Okay. The slow rates, it means the slow rates of capital formation in the Indian economy. If you remember the golden period of Indian economy, that is 2003 to 2008, the capital formation was very high. The saving rate and the investment rate was above 30. So you can imagine that during this time, in the last decade, it has been slowed down. So these are the reasons you have to write. The reasons are very simple if you just see. So again, the account for slow rates, capital formation, last ticket. Now, what are the points that you can write here? In the simple scenario, you can see that the first point, why the rate are slowing? You can say the global economy. So global economy is one of the reason. The second reason is that Indian economy is consumption based. So consumption based economy took a toll when that is 2016 demonetization and then again you can say GST in 2017. So this is demonetization. So it was like hurt. So that was consumption based and suddenly it took a toll. Gradually it has started improving but you know in 2020 again the COVID-19 problem struck the Indian economy. So these were the many issues that why the slow rates up. So account for means you have to assess that and then you have to mention all the details. So this is how you can tackle this question. You write four or five points, bullet points directly with a simple introduction and then the conclusion. That's it. You will gain marks. Now this is the second question. So they are asking that do you agree? Again, the answer is very simple. So again, you can see they're asking. So it means you have to provide a judgment. So if I ask you, are you watching this video? So the answer would be yes or no. So on the same lines, do you agree? It means yes or no. So do you agree with the view that child labor, child labor in India is a socio-economic problem. It means child labor in India is not the only social problem, economic problem, political, but it's a mix of socio-economic problem. So what you have to write, obviously you will say that yes, if you see approximately 150 million children in India, and if you see the data given by OECD, that is 10 million plus in India, they are child labor. So you can see it's below 10 percent but you can imagine that it this the number is coming down in the in the years gradual years it has been seen like in 10 years 20 years so since decades it has come down but yes you know that it's a socio-economic problem so your introduction must start that yeah we do agree that 
चाइल्ड लेबर इज अ सोशल इकोनॉमिक प्रॉब्लम इट नॉट जस्ट इकोनॉमिक ओनली इट्स नॉट जस्ट सोशल प्रॉब्लम वाई बिकॉज वी कंसिडर इन द रूरल एरियाज इन द वेयर पीपल आर लेस एजुकेटेड लेस अवेयर वॉट दे डू इज दे थिंक दैट देयर चाइल्ड इज अ एक्स्ट्रा हैंड दैट कैन ब्रिंग फूड टू द फैमिली सो दैट इज वाई दे सेंड देयर चिल्ड्रेन टू वर्क फॉर देयर वर्क नॉट टू द स्कूल इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट रिपोर्ट गिवन बाई सो चिल्ड्रेन बिलोंग्स टू स्कूल not the workplace that was the main theme so you write these kind of data you write oecd reports you give certain data and then you'll be able to support that it's a socio economic problem if you are able to support with four or five points you will get the marks the third question you can see it's a very simple question straight forward comment on the latest measure of poverty so here again if you remember that video where i discuss all the directives comment comment on the latest measures can you tell me in the comment section what are the latest measure in the comment section type it quickly so on the latest measure of poverty in indian context context india ke rakhna if you remember I started with planning commission poverty measure calorie based then lakda wala committee then tendulkar committee rangarajan committee so latest measure he is asking so i can say the 2009 tendulkar committee and 2014 oh. so 2009 tendulkar committee and 2014 that is rangarajan committee so these are the latest measure of poverty in india so this you have to comment comment means the differences the acceptance level so you can see it is 20.9% according to 2009 tendulkar committee report in 2014 it is 29.5% so according to rangarajan committee poverty in india has increased but if we see the uh, tendulkar committee previous report that came in 2004 the poverty has declined significantly so we just have to comment it means you have to write whether this is acceptable not acceptable irrespective of that you just have to mention the information the next is what to write here so here you have to make an impact assessment you see impact assessment it means what happened after that a implementation of the scheme so it make an impact assessment of pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana it means after launching this gram sadak yojana what has changed in the rural areas so you know that if suppose this is the highway in the rural area then all the roads connecting to it are considered as the rural roads generally okay for example you understand so that has improved the connectivity it means if suppose someone is taking some goods from here then to a particular go down or a market place then it has improved a lot since the gram sadak yojana started implementation so impact assessment means what happened after the implementation of this scheme it means what were the benefits the merits of this yojana okay yeah this is next question so it is do you think that back to village back to village policy by the central government will reduce pressure on the urban amenities now it is very simple the answer is yes because if you think about bottom up approach obviously that will help the nation so if you see that it is suppose delhi this is delhi so if you have different different satellite towns like noida gurugram etc that will like put down the pressure on the city itself on the same lines if you have mumbai so in the land locked area we have navi mumbai so that is also there to reduce the pressure on mumbai on the same lines we are doing for other other cities as well so yes that if you develop villages then obviously it will reduce the pressure on urban amenities why because whether people come from village area to urban area as the part of push migration it means where they are not getting enough facility in villages 
with their employment, drinking water, living facilities, standard of living, etc. They pushed from the village to urban areas. So that is that can be stopped by this. So yes, the answer is yes. Do you think that? So the answer is yes. But back to village policy will provide bottom up approach. And that is the main agenda of Niti Ayo. So you just write some examples, mention organization. And from this, they, you'll be able to answer that. Yeah, so the next one is this. This is the last question for this video. So do you think that the current exchange rate policy is appropriate for sustainable balance of trade? So again, the answer to the question, do you think? Now here they have mentioned, do you not, they haven't mentioned, do you agree? They have mentioned, do you think? It means you can think in the other way as well. It's they will respect your opinion. So do you think that the current exchange rate policy is appropriate? It means in line for the sustainable balance of trade. Now, you know, during COVID, it was hit tremendously, the export of goods and services due to lockdown in various countries at a various time. So the answer is that the current exchange rate policy obviously will benefit because we have seen the demerits of the fixed exchange rate. Now we are moving towards convertibility and beyond. So the answer is yes, that the current exchange rate policy is appropriate for sustainable policy. So the depending on your thoughts that the policy is good, but how you can make that scheme or the policy sustainable? This you have to answer. So I hope you understand the question, understanding of the question. The answer writing is a different issue. Whenever we are teaching the students in our live classes, these questions will discuss surely and we have been discussing how to write, what to write. We'll give you the model answers as well. So these are the things that will help you in developing your answer writing skills. So this is a video where I discuss the five markers and the next 15 markers we'll see in a separate video. So I hope you like this video. Give a big thumbs up, share with your friends so that you can study, they can study. And if you study together, both will grow. So the same lines, we will see that 15 markers in the next video and the 20 markers subsequent. So don't forget to subscribe your colleagues because you will be getting subsequent videos after that. Apart from that, we are having the live classes for economics optional Indian economic service and various other courses. For that, you can check out our website given in the description. At last, we are providing free mentorship to all the students, those who are preparing for economic service exam, optional or any other examination related to economics. The number is given in the description. You can take the appointment and directly you can talk to the faculties, including me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a nice day.